Hey everyone, Eric Stackelbeck here. Today on the newscast, a major archaeological find in Israel dating back some 2,800 years to a major period in the Old Testament. You won't want to miss this. Stick around. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. We've been spending a lot of time here over the past month or so monitoring the very tense situation in the Middle East as the Iranian regime continues to threaten the United States and Israel. We will continue to monitor that situation in the days and weeks to come here on the newscast. But another major focus of our team here is biblical archaeology. We love it. And there's so much of it going on in Israel right now, it's hard to keep track. On December 23rd, you can check it out in our archives. We posted a video about two major archaeological discoveries in the Garden of Gethsemane in Jerusalem, a place that obviously has great New Testament significance. That video in the past two weeks already has about a quarter of a million views. We encourage you to check it out. Now, the star of that video was Danny the Digger Herman, who we interviewed, our good friend, Watchman contributor, top Israeli tour guide and archaeologist. He brought us all the breaking details on these archaeological discoveries in the Garden of Gethsemane. Today, Danny has another great archaeological piece that you probably haven't heard about, hasn't made a whole lot of headlines, and that's why we are really intrigued by it. This discovery dates back some 2,800 years to the time of Jeroboam II, the uh, Israeli king, during a time of great prosperity for the kingdom of Israel. But danger was lurking right around the corner, as Danny will describe, a very important archaeological discovery. Hey, if you like this kind of information, be sure to subscribe to the Watchman News channel right here on YouTube and click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. We're bringing you the security updates. We're bringing you the Bible archaeology updates, the kind of information that you just won't hear anywhere else, certainly not in the mainstream media. Okay, let's get into it with our good friend Danny the Digger Herman joining us from his home in Israel. Take a look. Danny the Digger Herman, thanks so much for joining us. As always, you've got another great archaeological find to share with us dating back some 2,800 years. Danny, tell us what you have. Well, this is uh, really a great story because um, such discoveries are really rare. Uh, we're talking about a little uh, oval-shaped item that a professor from Ben-Gurion University purchased in the 1970s. And he paid for it only a few dollars, so he didn't thought it was real uh, and worth much, but he still liked it and kept it. And now... Almost uh, 50 years later, it's been studied and proven to be genuine. It is a 2,800 and something uh, seal impression of a clerk in the administration of King Jeroboam, Jeroboam II, the peak of the Israelite kingdom that uh, is documented very briefly in the Bible, but through archaeology and a little bit that we are told in the Bible, Jeroboam II was quite a mighty king, okay? He subdued the Ammonites, the Moabites. He conquered all the way up to Damascus. And already in the early 20th century, a German archaeologist digging in Megiddo, Gottlieb Schumacher, found a seal of a, of a clerk in his administration. It's a beautiful seal depicting a roaring lion. And above it, it reads, of Shema, the servant of Jeroboam. And servant means actually a high official. That is, to this day, the, the biggest and the nicest seal from the Israelite kingdom. The original, unfortunately, was lost. It was taken by the Turks and yeah. disappeared. But, but 28 now we years have, old. I mean, wow. Yes. Deep, deep yes, totally. in the Old Testament and really the illustrious days of that kingdom, the kingdom of Israel and, and Judea. But it's, it's the kingdom of the Israelites, which is even more significant because the from the Judean kingdom... We do have uh, some seals and seal impressions found mostly in Jerusalem, in the city of David. I, I saw you covering some of these discoveries, but finding in the kingdom of the Israelites in, in Samaria or in Megiddo, that's exceptionally rare. And this specific item was not found in proper excavations. It was looted from somewhere and uh, changed hands till it reached the Bedouin market of Beersheba, of all places, and then purchased by 
uh, a history buff and a coin uh, collector who is really a, a physicist. I mean, he's known for nuclear energy and, and other fields. But and he, did he, he know what that- he was purchasing, Danny? He had this rare gem that he was purchasing at, as you said, a Bedouin market in Beersheba in southern Israel. And he finds this incredible archaeological nugget yes. dating back some 2,800 years. Did he have a, an idea of what exactly he was purchasing? The, the, what he bought also depicts a roaring lion, and it reminded him of the famous one from Megiddo. So he, he took a look at it and he bargained over the price. And when he had to pay only a few dollars, like 10 shekels in Israeli value, he, he said, this cannot be real. There's no way that a genuine item would be sold for such a low price. But he still kept it and, and just had it stored. And now... Uh, a few uh, other scholars decided to examine it. Now we have better techniques to examine the, the material. We can actually tell from microscopic analysis where a certain clay comes from. The research indicated that it came from the area of Megiddo and that it was burnt around the 8th century, meaning it was used by some clerk to sign some document and then the archive caught fire. Maybe the fire of Megiddo or the fire of Jezreel or who knows some other Israelite city that got burnt by the Assyrians, but the, the firing of the Bula made it even harder and last till our modern times. This is a very important testimony for administration and for uh, using written documents in the Israelite kingdom in the 8th and 9th century. Uh, and especially if it is associated to Jeroboam II, it's another testimony for the climax of, of the Israelite period in his time, to the, the extreme growth and the administration that is also attested in other fields. In fact, there's a whole line of scholarship, especially by the Tel Aviv University, arguing that Jeroboam II is the peak of, of uh, the biblical times, but the Bible written in Jerusalem doesn't like that king that much. So only seven brief sentences describe the 36 years of reign of this Jeroboam II. And now the, this archaeological find and others are beginning to balance that and show what a mighty king he was. Now in the Bible, he's, met, he's mentioned a few times as one of the evil kings. He's a contemporary yeah. of uh, the prophet Amos of Jonah, and this is right before, not long before that Assyrian invasion where they carted away 10 of the 12 tribes of Israel. We've got the good kings and we've got the bad kings. Although he was highly successful in a material sense, he did not walk in the ways of the Lord. He and Ahab, he was another mighty king of the Israelite kingdom that apparently, at least militarily and, and financially, brought the Israelite kingdom to unprecedented prosperity. But shortly after his death, the, the Israelite kingdom would, would pretty much disappear. Within less yeah. than 20 years after he passes away, Tiglat Pil Eser, the, the Assyrian king, conquers most of the Israelite kingdom and, and sends the 10 tribes to exile, and, and that's it. Although this was a very prosperous period, uh, they were not walking in the ways of God, and they paid a heavy price with that Assyrian yes. invasion, which eventually came. Danny, fascinating stuff as always. So what's next? Right now they're studying this seal impression dating back 2,800 years. And uh, what's next? Yeah. A lot of scholarship will be done on this, I guess, from researchers and archaeologists in Israel. This is going to be published in a proper scholarly way uh, soon. They just gave uh, like a press announcement that, about this. And it's, it's another demonstration that despite the pandemic, the research continues. Discoveries are still being made and research is still being done. And more and more finds keep coming from the grounds of the Holy Land. Fascinating. It's fascinating stuff. And Danny, we know you will continue to bring us these cutting edge stories. It's hard to keep track, right? There's so many amazing finds. By the way, you're coming to us from your home in Israel, uh, in Modin, the home of the yeah. Maccabees. 300 feet away from my house is a 2,200-year-old synagogue, possibly the synagogues where the Maccabees used to assemble and maybe decide to rebel against the Seleucid Greeks. Who knows? Wow. But yes, hey, wherever that. you go in Israel, it's all soaked with archaeology, even near my house. That is true. We love that stone behind you as well, my friend. It looks like Jerusalem stone. Thank you so much, my friend, as always. God bless. Hang in there, and we will see you again soon. Thanks, Danny. Amen. Thank you. Lito. Thanks again, as always, to our good friend, Danny the Digger Herman. Folks, you can check him out at dannythedigger.com. He is on the cutting edge of everything that is happening in the Holy Land right now regarding biblical archaeology 
and these amazing finds that are coming so frequently, it's hard to keep track, but we're doing our best here on the Watchman Newscast, and we will continue to bring you great guests like the one and only Danny the Digger Herman, who are bringing us the inside scoop, no pun intended, on all of these great archaeological finds in Israel. Hey, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. We're bringing you not only the latest on all the security news out of the Middle East and why it matters to you, but how God is moving in his land today. And one way he's doing it is through these amazing archaeological finds that prove the truth of the Bible. So thanks for joining us. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace.